We're here in front of some examples, little two foot by two foot mock-ups of above grade wall assemblies. And we're looking at several different sheathing options here. We kind of wanted to cover why you would want to use an insulating sheathing at all. And there's two main reasons. One is thermal performance and the other is moisture performance. On the thermal performance side, about 25% of the wall area of a typical house is studs. So every 16 inch on center, you have a wood stud, you have a lot of wood framing around windows. If you add all of that up, it's about 25% of the wall area of an exterior wall. That's uninsulated if you don't have an insulating sheathing. If you only have fiberglass or cellulose in the stud cavity, then every 16 inches you have an uninsulated space. That adds up to about 25% of the wall area, so about 25% of the wall could be uninsulated completely if you don't have insulating sheathing. So that's why you need a complete layer around the whole house of insulation. From a moisture standpoint, what you're trying to achieve is to reduce the potential for condensation inside the wall. And when it's cold outside, warm inside a house, you're gonna have a potential for the warm, moist air in the house which is trying to move toward the outside to condense on the first cold surface it gets to, which is usually the sheathing on the outside of the wall. If you have an un- or non-insulating sheathing on the outside, like some wood-based product, it's going to be a lot colder than an insulating sheathing for that warm, moist air to contact. So you're more likely to have a potential for condensation when you have a non-insulating sheathing than an insulating sheathing. So those are the two main reasons to consider an insulating sheathing on the outside of above grade walls, moisture performance and thermal performance. Now we're looking at below grade walls, in this case basement walls. The first example we're going to look, look at is insulating on the outside of a basement wall. The particular product we're looking at here is Styrofoam brand Paramate insulation. It performs three functions in one product. On the outside of the basement wall, it provides a complete layer of insulation and it protects the waterproofing membrane that spray on the outside of the basement wall. And the grooves in Paramate help assist water drainage down and away from the basement wall. So you get three functions in one product and you get the benefit, of course, of saving energy because now you've insulated the basement wall where you can get 30 or 40 percent of the heat loss of the whole house can go out through an uninsulated basement wall. But you also improve the moisture performance of your basement because you reduce the potential for condensation on the inside of the basement wall, which can happen on cold basement walls. That turns into mold, moisture, and odor issues. So this is one example for the outside of a basement wall. Now we're looking at the inside of a crawl space wall. There's two ways to build crawl spaces. Traditionally, they've been vented crawl spaces, vents on, in the crawl space wall so air can move in and out of the crawl space. A much more energy efficient and best, better moisture way to build crawl spaces is unvented or conditioned crawl spaces where it is completely closed. It's insulated on the inside of the crawl space wall with something like a foam sheathing and therefore the crawl space is about the same conditions as the, as the inside of the house. Much more energy efficient and better from a moisture standpoint. So it's a more, makes a more comfortable situation in the crawl space which helps the environment in the home also. In this case we're showing Thermax insulation which can be left exposed to the inside of the crawl space. Now we're looking at the inside of a basement wall. So these are solutions that can be used in existing homes or new homes. In this case, we're looking at styrofoam wall mate insulation. It is applied directly to the inside of the basement wall. There are channels, when you put two boards together, there's channels that accept a wood furring strip. You screw through the wood furring strip into the basement wall. That holds the foam on the wall and then the drywall is attached to that wood furring strip. So this is a very quick, clean, easy way for a homeowner or a professional to insulate the inside of a basement wall. And again, you get the benefits of improved thermal performance, lower utility bills, and improved moisture performance inside the basement. Again, we're looking at insulating on the inside of a basement wall. So again, this could be used for existing or new construction. 
In this case, we're, call, we're using a product called Thermax White Finish. The unusual thing about Thermax is that it can be left exposed to the inside of the basement. Most foam plastics have to be covered by drywall. In this case, Thermax can be left exposed, so this is a very quick, clean, easy way to insulate the inside of a basement wall. In this case, the Thermax is applied directly to the basement wall. There's different ways to seal the joints in between boards of Thermax, and then you're done. There's no framing, there's no fiberglass, there's no drywall, and you end up with an attractive interior finish on an insulated basement, which gives you the thermal performance, lower utility bills, remembering that 30 or 40 percent of the heat loss in a house can go through the basement wall if it's uninsulated, and you get the improved moisture performance, which makes it a more comfortable, dry, livable basement area. This is an attachment and joint sealing way that you can do Thermax. This PVC strip is attached to the basement wall, then two boards are butted together, and this covers the joint, makes a little more attractive looking joint, and helps to prevent air leakage through that joint area between boards. If somebody wanted to insulate further by putting studs and bats in this wall, they could just put studs right up against the wall, against this foam, and then put their bats in between and then drywall on top of that if they wanted additional insulation. But this product can be used up to four inches thick on the inside of a basement, which gives you more than an R25. We're going to be looking at uh, a demonstration using an infrared camera of the heat loss through above grade walls. Now this demonstration is slanted just to make it easier to see and feel. But this is a, a, an above grade wall. One side is sheathed with a non-insulating wood based sheathing. The other side is sheathed with an insulating sheathing, in this case styrofoam structural insulated sheathing. Yeah, there's a heater inside this cabinet, so both of these sides are the same temperature. So this is going to show the heat loss that can occur differently through foam sheathing, an insulating sheathing, versus a non-insulating sheathing. So we'll look at the IR screen and see the dramatic difference between these two sides, which is going to show you the difference in heat loss that can occur through your wall with non-insulating versus insulating sheathing. What we're looking at here now is an infrared image of the wall we were just looking at. And the bright red side is the side with the non-insulating sheathing, in this case a wood base sheathing. And you can see the temperature of that surface is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit right here. If now we look at the temperature of the side with an insulating sheathing, you can see the dramatic difference. Bright red is showing a lot of heat loss blue is showing very little heat loss and you'll see the temperature of that surface is about 78 degrees. So a big difference in the surface temperature with uh, non-insulating sheathing versus insulating sheathing. What this translates to of course is the money you're paying to heat your house is escaping through the walls with a non-insulating sheathing and you're saving more of that energy and money with an insulating sheathing.